All right, guys, going to do one more for you guys tonight. Talking um, a little bit about what is old is new again. And uh, to me, the passing game has been revolutionized by four people over the course of, of history. Obviously, guys have had tremendous influence, but most of the passing game comes from uh, four theories. The first one being uh, the Air Coriel stuff of the Chargers in the 70s and what he did there. Uh, the modern West Coast offense developed by Bill Walsh actually when he was in Cincinnati and then perfected when he went to San Francisco. And then in terms of college football, the influence that seems to be lasting over the course of the last um, 20 or 30 years is the air raid with how mummy Mike Leach and now guys like Lincoln Riley and Neil Brown uh, but what the guy I consider uh, maybe the most influential football coach of the last uh, 40 years in college football is Steve Spurrier, uh, given what he did at Florida and bringing um, the more open style of offense uh, to the Southeastern Conference and to this part of the country, if you will. Uh, now, if you go back and you look at Coach Spurrier's offense back at Duke and at Florida. Now, if you look at the film, we're going to see a lot of high formation, three wide stuff. But some of the passing concepts have morphed into the more spread, conventional spread formations tonight. Uh, I had a chance while I was coaching in college football at North Greenville University. I worked for two guys, uh, worked with two guys at North Greenville, Chad Staggs and Skylar McGee, who had GA'd for Coach Spurrier. But they were on the defensive side of the ball. And then um, later on at North Greenville and then at Gardner Webb, when I moved to coach offense, our offensive coordinator, Brett Nichols, played quarterback for Coach Spurrier at South Carolina. I actually played for Lou Holtz first and then played for Coach Spurrier and had the opportunity for Coach Spurrier to be his position coach his last two or three years in college. So uh, working with Brett for six or seven years at North Greenville and then Gardner-Webb was able to pick his brain on some of the theories Coach Spurrier talked about and how a couple of his concepts have withstood the test of time and they continue to be maybe the top shot concepts, meaning throw the football down the field off of play action um, as they go and what Coach Spurrier, what we're going to talk about tonight is actually a play from the Ohio State Michigan game that is a version, maybe a first cousin of what Coach Spurrier used to call his Mills route, M-I-L-L-S. And if you Google it right now and you said Steve Spurrier Mills route, plenty of articles will come up. And actually how the name got it is the guy who ran the post route on his first team at Florida was a guy named Ernie Mills. And I think the first series when he's at Florida in 1990, they go down and they hit a big play to Ernie Mills. And the concept is what he called it at Florida and then with the Redskins and then at South Carolina was the Mills concept. So I'm going to go to the share screen. We'll talk about some of the different versions that Coach Spurrier used over the years. And then we'll watch a clip of Ohio State hitting the over with the deep post concept behind um, as they beat Michigan again for the 9,000th time in a row. And I have no dog in that fight. But uh, it's fun to see as we talk, as we move into a new decades, 30 years, 40 years of Coach Spurrier in college football seems to um, still be working as I get on and I work into this video. So you guys can see on Huddle Playbook, I've actually called it Spurrier Special. Now, the version of the Mills route is when Coach Spurrier started this, this was done primarily as a play action under center running his lead draw concept. People call it lead draw. Some people call it sprint draw, whatever. They were iso blocking the front. The fullback was leading up on a backer, and they were handing the draw well on the lead draw play action pass. Um, the linemen were blocking like they would iso block, just not leaving the side. And they would obviously fake the draw, try and get the pull from, if you guys look where my mouse is, try and get the pull from the second level up here and then maybe get a safety to latch down on this dig or this over route. And if the safety continued to get depth and these linebackers got pulled up by the play action hitting the dig, 
or the curl or the over route, whichever one they decided to tie in. Now, for the purpose of this video, I've got it drawn up as an over route, the number two receiver with the deep post behind it. So what you're basically trying to do here is high low the front side safety wherever he is. So if in the purpose of this video, Michigan is going to be in a single high look, meaning they're going to walk their boundary safety down here into the box, and they're going to have one safety. And what you want to do is you want to run a deep over route and force that safety to clamp down on the over, thus opening up the post behind and throwing a one-on-one -on -one shot between the outside receiver and the corner. If you're getting a split safety look, meaning this safety was on that hash, you would probably run a little bit more at him and run a dig route. But the same concept remains is you hope that safety does not keep pedaling back on the hash. You want him to clamp down on the dig route, as the case may be right here, opening up the one-on-one -on -one shot on the corner. If that safety continues to bail and he's underneath the post route, there is a chance that the post might actually flank him this way. But if he keeps sinking and you still get the play action pull from the sprint draw concept, which is now turned into really the read zone concept off of that, if you get that pull, you might still have an open window to throw the dig. Um, also, back when Coach Spur was running this more out of the eye formation, that safety might be over the top as a bonus linebacker about eight yards. Instead of running a dig, they might run a hook. But the same idea for that safety to stay down and take the dig, the over, um, or the hook route, curl route, and open up the one-on-one -on -one shot behind. So as we sit there and we flip over to this ball play um, from Ohio State and Michigan last year, this is what you've got. So you look at the pre-snap alignment. Michigan has reduced this dog safety, the boundary safety, to be a plus one defender in the box. All right. So when you hear coaches talk about one high, two high, they're referring to what are these two guys doing. So as they move this dog safety down into the box, the free is going to be what you call a post defender. I'm having nightmares coming back from watching this because in one of the two games we lost this year, uh, New Hanover beat us, and they're coached by a guy named Dylan Dimmick, uh, who is a terrific football coach in his own route. Our safety latches down on the over route, and they hit the post behind us. So uh, this gives me a little bit angry flashbacks. But you can see Michigan is going to play a single high look. So this should tell Justin Fields that they are going to either be playing cover one, meaning man-to-man -man coverage on these three guys with safety help, or some type of cover three concept where the corners are deep as the deepest in this third of the field, and this third of the field, and this safety is going to be in the middle. Whether or not it's a single high cover three or a single high cover one, it really should not matter to the quarterback. He is focused as he's going to take this shot throw on how this man right here reacts to the number two receiver, which is the slot right here. So Ohio State, you can tell right now as this strong nickel uh, Sam linebacker, he will latch down right now. Fields knows this is going to be man-to-man. -man. What is Michigan going to do? Are they going to continue to carry this and tell this guy to keep sinking to the post? And if that happens, that is a long time for this man right here to cover this over route. All right, so they're trying to create a high-low with the number two on the over route. And or if he gets so much depth, the over route should get enough depth. And they're doing something over here to make sure this backside curl defender, obviously they've got what they call a green dog blitz, but they want the backside curl defender, if he stays in coverage, to latch down on that and open up this cavity for the over route if the safety decides to get depth. So essentially this quarterback right here should be reading this. Once he realizes that this safety is not getting any depth and he's going to latch, latch down on the over, Fields is going to let it fly on the one-on-one -on -one throw on the corner up top. Now, Don Brown is, I'm sure, a much better football coach than me. 
as a defensive secondary guy, you hear a lot of guys when they are fluent in saving these, they talk about divider leverage, okay? So this ball right here is on this right hash. This receiver has a split all the way out on the numbers. Now the old school theory of playing man free coverage is that this corner right here has help inside. Ryan Day knows that. So he knows that this corner will be a little bit slower and allow that guy to maybe run an inside stemming route. Um, so the thought is I've got help inside. I might funnel this guy back inside. Well, I we actually teach our corners that if he's got a wide split, meaning he's on the numbers at all with the ball in the opposite hash, we're playing inside leverage because the reality of in high school football, um, very few quarterbacks can make that field throw all the way to the outside of the numbers. So if I'm coaching Michigan's field corner right here, I'm going berserk in the film session. I would actually like to see him play inside leverage on the post, even though he thinks he's got inside help from the free safety. So you got a little bit of a breakdown here. Over here, you've got a tight split because the ball is on the near hash. So for him to be considered a wide split, he would actually have to be out here between the numbers and the sidelines. So I don't mind that guy playing uh, outside leverage. I, I'd want him to play outside leverage because he's tightened his, his split down so that he has more room to work down here on the divider. But you can watch it go through full right here. There's no play action on this. Um, if they're playing zone, you're not going to get near as much pull. These linebackers are going to get a lot better drops off of this, and this play is not as good. Um, if they're playing man, and they know that these guys are going to add blitz, meaning if their man is not out in the route, they're going to go. You don't have to worry so much about getting that pull up into the line of scrimmage. Uh, but most of the time, this concept is used uh, with a play action element to it. But they will right latch the over right here. Safety doesn't sink. And I'm sure they went over the uh, – scout report all week saying don't latch the over, don't latch the over, keep sinking, keep sinking. And at that point, when that safety covers it and he sees that ball thrown behind his ear, he does what we call the oh crap steps and prays that the corner doesn't get beat. But he does in this case, and it sets up a first and goal type for the end zone. So let's look at Fields' shot where his eyes, he sees that safety not getting depth. Ball's going deep. You might want to see that ball thrown a little bit more inside, but still big boy throw right there from, from that kid. Serious arm talent. So that gives us another look tonight. Coach Spurrier is the gift that keeps on giving. And um, as a child of the fun and gun in the 1990s, boy, they were sure fun to watch. And his concepts will live um, as long as we keep throwing the football on the yard. You guys have a good night.